Well, I think we're, we're extremely privileged today. We had lots of lovely people to talk to, but I think we're most privileged today to have a, a hugely inspiring athlete, Jane Egan. Jane, it's so lovely to have you here. Thank um, you. Your story is it's a difficult one, but it's hugely inspirational, hugely. Just talking to you before, I'm kind of blown away with <laughs> what you've been through. But first of all, let's just talk about this incredible triathlon career that you're having at the moment. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't know where this has come from. <laughs> it was uh, it was an accident. You know, I, I only got into triathlon because I had a lot of friends who do it. Um, my partner does triathlon and uh, so I happened to have some kit and um, I got started with that and uh, the next thing I knew I was having a conversation about selection for um, the squad in 2010 and after that it's just been amazing, real shock. You are um, the current, no, yeah, you're the current European and world. Yes. Tri tri uh, let, me get this, let me get this right. Para triathlon champion. Yes. And um, how did you, how did you, I mean, you've explained how you got in the sport, mm -hmm. but let's talk a little bit about your condition first, sure. because this is something that it, it's very difficult, it's difficult to understand. But yes. Four and a half years ago, you were a kind of normal person, Absolutely. going about your life, yep. doing your stuff, and, yep. and a small operation on your Achilles has meant that you are no longer able to walk. That's right. I um, ruptured my Achilles tendon um, by the blue uh, about four and a half years ago and had a uh, repair surgery. And you know, it's, it's a big surgery, but it happens to people. It's quite a common injury and um, you know, there's nothing particularly um, sort of unusual about the surgery. Uh, but with hindsight, it was apparent that there were some, some unusual symptoms there right from when I had the surgery. It was just that I, I don't think I realised, you know, I didn't know what to expect. So um, I had a, a lot more pain than I ought to have had. I had a lot of nerve pain, um, which should have been unusual. Um, and my, uh, some, my, my foot was very cold. Um, and I had uh, a huge amount of atrophy, much more rapidly than you might have expected. Um, but it became more apparent when I started to try and do the rehabilitation uh, with my first physio. I've seen many physios now. Um, and it was apparent that I wasn't making the progress I should have made and that the pain was actually getting worse instead of better. Um, so I went back and, and saw a specialist and I was diagnosed with a condition called complex regional pain syndrome um, and it's a very poorly understood and, and quite rare condition. Um, it's a neurological condition. That's right, it is um, a neurological condition and it's triggered by trauma to the nervous system. Um, but more than that, to be honest at this time, medical science doesn't really understand. So. I started to take medication and um, initially they were quite optimistic but um, when I then moved to my next physiotherapist who had had some experience of dealing with the condition um, and we started to try and work through rehabilitation, um, I started to develop really quite dramatic um, problems with my control of my muscles. It's worse than my legs and it's worse than my left side. Um, but it's uh, I've huge, it, it's almost like the signaling system to the muscles has broken down. So my central nervous system isn't controlling the muscles the way that it should do. So I now have um, a variety of neurological movement disorders as well, which are very disabling in their own right. Wow, I mean, that in itself is a huge challenge, but there's a take on triathlon on top of that. <laughs> yeah, well, triathlon was supposed to be a therapeutic thing. <laughs> And in many ways it has been for me, you know, I, I, I'd always done a lot of sport, I, um, you know, all the hobbies I had were sporty hobbies and active hobbies and I did keep trying to train through my initial Achilles rupture, you know, I kept going to the gym and, you know, I did what I could, um, so I couldn't, couldn't really imagine a life without sport in it, you know, all my friends are friends I've made through sport, um, so in many ways for me triathlon was something that, that has been quite therapeutic. It's given me something to, to focus on, something positive. Um, 
it's helped me meet other people who have gone through um, disabilities that they've either grown up with and had to learn to manage um, or that they've, they've had accidents or injuries and had to come to terms with um, in many cases quite severe disability uh, and, and you really couldn't meet a, a nicer, more well-adjusted bunch of people. Um, they're great fun, they've all got normal lives, obviously they, they have their disabilities but you know they're doing things that everyone else does and and it, I suppose it helped me see that actually it wasn't the end of the world, that there could still be a very fulfilling life, I could still do lots of sport, obviously it's different, the equipment's different, um, but I'm still there and I'm still participating rather than just being an observer of other people doing sport. So it's, it's been a really positive thing for me and um, you know, and I've, I've always promised myself and people around about me that if, if it stopped being positive, I would stop doing it um, because there's no point for me. Life is, is difficult enough for me without uh, adding to the complications. You, you talk about participating, but you're obviously doing a lot more than participating. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> after everything you've gone through, tell us what the feeling was like to cross the finish line at the World Championships and go, hey, I'm dealing with this, you know, very irritating condition. It's messing up my life, but hey, I'm a world champion. What was that like? Absolutely surreal. Uh, and, you know, it still feels surreal to me. Uh, I, I just, I still feel like the same person that I was. And, and the idea that you're a world champion at something, um, Sounds sounds so divorced from reality. I, I still struggle with it, um, and it, I mean it was wonderful. I, it's 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 a fantastic feeling, and anyone who's crossed the finish line knows what a wonderful feeling it is to cross the line. You don't need to be first; you can be last. It's still wonderful. Um, but to cross and know that you've won and that you've, you've won this title and it is just amazing. And it really is a huge. It's a huge boost. It, it is a hugely positive. Feeling. What, what, what kind of message would you give to people out there who are, you know, the, you're going through one of the biggest challenges you know, sure. any human could face? What, what is it that each day just keeps you going? You know what, I'm just going to crack on with this. <laughs> um, I think for me, it's, it's, I take each day one day at a time. Um, I, I don't have a condition where I know what it's going to be like every day. So um, some days are, are good for me, and I try and make the most of things, and I do my training and and so on. And other days, I'm not able to do anything. I, I really, literally, am unable to get out of bed. And I know that I'm going to have those days, and I have them a lot. So I try and make the best of the good days. Um, and it's difficult, I, I can't lie, I'm still struggling with coming to terms with such an altered lifestyle, so many of the expectations and, um, and dreams and things that you you assume are going to happen in your life, having been shattered or changed or taken away. Um, and it is really tough, I struggle with, I've struggled with depression since my diagnosis as well and that's a quite a common um, feature of these sorts of conditions as well. So uh, all I can do is, is try and um, make the most of the good days that I have, um, try not to dwell on the bad days and, um, and, and try and stay as positive as possible because being positive and doing a bit of exercise has lots of well-known positive effects on the body and on the mind. So for me, my training, I see it almost as, as part of keeping myself healthy mentally and physically. What, what, what does 2012 hold for you now? What are you looking forward to? Well, um, I've, uh, I've had a reasonable winter's training. I, I really struggled last winter. Um, so this year has been better for me. Um, I'm kicking off the season uh, with the European Championships in Elat in April. So uh, no small races to begin with, nothing to get warmed up with, straight into that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be, it'll be good. Um, I've never been to that part of the world, but um, I gather it's going to be hot, which is good for me. I prefer it to be warm. And um, it should be a reasonably flat course. So again, that 
suits me better. Um, so I, I'm, that, that, that's my, my start of my season. Um, and then at the end, six months later, we have the World Championships in Auckland. And I'm hoping that I'll be fit and able to go. Um, so that's that's really exciting. It's a tremendous uh, place. I've never been to New Zealand before, so uh, not only having the opportunity to go and compete, but having the opportunity to travel somewhere uh, as exciting as that is, is going to be great. Um, and in the middle, um, I've got uh, hopefully a couple of uh, UK domestic races. We don't have many this year because of the uh, the Olympics falling in the middle. Um, so. I'm looking forward to those and obviously I'm taking part in the Leonard Cheshire uh, Try Together event in August uh, which will be a, a nice warm up for the Strathclyde Park and then for the World Championship. Tell us a little bit more about that race we, we touched on it earlier. Yes, um, the, the, the race is uh, in its second year. Um, it's, it's expanded uh, from last year. This year they have a junior race as well as the adult race and it's a race that is um, specifically aimed at, uh, at, at generating complete inclusion. So paratriathlon has a classification system. Not everyone with a disability can participate in paratriathlon, but the Try Together race is intended to allow absolutely anyone to participate. It doesn't matter how severe their disability is um, or you know, what that disability is, there's a way that, they can, that, that people can participate. So it might be in a team, um, it might be doing it individually, uh, it might be using special equipment, whatever it is, uh, it's, it's about getting involved and it's about uh, a wide sense of inclusion both for the able-bodied athletes and the disabled athletes. Wow, that's amazing. Where, where can people find out more information you may want to take part? Um, they can find out more information from uh, Leonard, that would be the best place to think to. So it's the Leonard Cheshire Triathlon? It is, I think it's called the Try Together Triathlon. Okay, Try Together, but Leonard, but Leonard Cheshire, Cheshire are the charity who are um, Google that, they absolutely spearheaded it. Yes, if you Google yeah. that, then you'll find information for the triathlon. Well, well, it's been amazing talking to you, Jane, and, and you Thank are you. an absolute inspiration. And fingers crossed that you go out and you retain those uh, two titles, European and World title. And you can say you're a double world champion. That's going to be even more mind blowing. <laughs> That'd isn't be it? fabulous. Yeah, let's hope so. There's a long way to go. We'll see how it goes. I think anything's possible in your book. Oh, well. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you.